February 2nd, 2021 Hemp Show powered by CanTrade. My name is Mark Ristelli. I'm the CEO of CanTrade and the host of The Hemp Show. Starting off The Hemp Show today, we have Andrew Gross and Aaron Shireen with Urban Extracts. Andrew worked in high-level sales for nearly 10 years at Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley doing wealth management. After Wall Street, he had an opportunity of a lifetime to pursue a career in British Columbia, where he worked as a professional ski guide, as well as a mountain rescue safety worker and avalanche forecaster. This experience led to opportunities in film and television where he acquired many credits to his name. Andrew joined Urban Extracts in early 2020. He brings a different perspective and strength to the management team alongside CEO Aaron Shireen. Aaron is an entrepreneur and executive with more than 25 years of experience in creating, building, and leading companies in a diverse range of industries, including real estate, hospitality, technology, and agriculture. To be successful, Aaron has developed a design-first approach, thinking intuitively about customers and client interactions, where user experience is more than just a technical concept. Aaron builds teams by mentoring and inspiring, which fosters successful businesses from start to exit. He is a visionary, empowered by innovation and dedicated to achieving his goals. Thank you both very much for being here today and welcome to The Hemp Show, Aaron and Andrew. Thank you for having us, Mark. Excellent. So yeah, want to know everything there is to know about Urban Extract. So I would say go ahead, start from scratch and take us through. Oh, well, uh, why don't I start? Uh, Urban Extracts has been a, a seed to market uh, hemp uh, player in the state of New York since the inception of the program in New York in 2017, uh, we grow cooperatively with farmers, we extract, we develop products, and we distribute them. Uh, we've been doing that for three years. We're looking forward today to talking to you guys about the new hemp extract laws and regulations that have been put in place in New York to take care of consumer confidence that the products that are being Put on shelves are of high quality so we're looking forward to talking to you about that today very cool well, we're looking forward to learning about it too yeah. thanks no go ahead mark i was gonna say um thanks for again for having us on the hem show we're really excited to talk about the new guidelines and what uh, they mean to us and the benefits that uh hopefully we can all gain from it sure sure so i guess kicking it off um i'd love to know more about you know where urban extracts is right now what you guys are doing, what the plans are for the future, and then you can utilize that to go ahead and dive into the, the laws and restrictions that you have out there and the compliance that you need to go ahead and follow with your business. Great. Well, why don't I start by kind of explaining the, the, the program in New York and how uh, uh, the hemp industry has evolved here. We, up until now, up until the last three years, have been governed under the uh, agricultural and markets. This has been an agricultural initiative in the state of New York. And so the last three years, the state has kind of, you know, implemented the program to allow people to grow and to allow people to extract. The new hemp extract bill, I think, is a great thing that the state has put in place because it's the first time that it's allowing uh, extractors like ourselves to infuse products with food and beverage. So I think the state wanted to open up more opportunities for farmers, more opportunities for processors and adding on food and beverage other than just topicals uh, as, a, as, as, a, as a, a product category that's now governed and can assure consumers that they're getting high quality products that's on the shelves is what the intention of the pro program is. They wanna make sure that consumers know that whatever products on the shelf is being tracked from seed to market and it's being done according to higher standards. And so New York set these standards and in the new program, retailers, any retailer that wants to distribute hemp derived products needs to be a registered participant in the program. And they under their license can only buy hemp uh, compliant products that fall into, the, into this new program. So it's really gonna change the landscape of retail change the landscape of distribution, of production, obviously, and of growing, um, all for the benefit of consumer confidence, knowing that what's on shelves now is governed and is, is regulated and is of the highest quality. So that's what's being implemented in New York. Uh, 
And being part of the program the last three years, we are very much ready to, uh, uh, to implement those new laws. And if you can see behind me uh, the picture, this is a, this is a picture of our uh, new fully scaled uh, extraction facility. It's an 18,000 square foot facility that uh, we've been building for the last year and a half in a partnership with the town of Warwick. The town of Warwick um, inherited a former prison um, from, the, from the state of New York and as part of an economic redevelopment initiative invited us in there, uh, seeing as we were growing in the community uh, of farmers that's in Warwick, invited us to be part of this uh, 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 revitalization of this former prison. And we felt very honored to be part of that and, and to take one of the buildings. This is the building behind me where we're converting it and, uh, and should be opened by Q2 of this year under the new guidelines. Uh, this extraction facility that not only allows us to extract biomass and raw materials, but gives us a platform to develop products and attract developers. And I think that's really the next evolution here with the new guidelines, developers really need to be manufacturing under GMP compliant uh, facilities and, and under the materials that have that um, uh, uh, tracking of seed to market. And so we want to empower developers and use our infrastructure as a place to create innovation by bringing other people and letting them leverage uh, off the infrastructure and then take advantage of the new regulations, which I think are going to open up a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there's a lot of information there. I, I thought of about six or seven questions that I wanted to run by you. But the first one I want to address is the fact that you're building this, you know, awesome location in a former prison, a prison that most likely housed people for, um, you know, let's say minor drug possessions, uh, cannabis possession, heck, even maybe hemp possession, because nobody could tell the difference at the time. Um, you know, can you tell me a bit about that process and, and how that resonates with your brand and what you're building overall there? Um, and then just, I guess, last comment, I think we'd have a much better a much better, happier country if we could convert most of our prisons into, you know, cannabis, wheat slash hemp growing facilities. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, first of all, I think we were very honored to be invited by the town of Warwick to participate in this opportunity because this plant, whether in hemp or cannabis form, has been illegal for 80 years. Um, yeah, and, and, and a lot of people have gone to prison as a result of it, having the opportunity to convert and revitalize the former prison, I think became something very important and, and, and a component that can bring in some jo uh, social justice uh, and equality. And so we want to incorporate that in our practice. And the way we do that is, you know, firstly, being coming into this industry in New York early on, we wanted to really position ourselves as an infrastructure company, a company that can can be the infrastructure and empower others um, to, 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 to create the content. And so whether that's partnering with farmers in the town of Warwick, where this facility is, 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 is a very famous uh, farming community called the Black Dirt region. The Black Dirt uh, has a very unique soil texture a thousand years ago, a glacier melted there, left the nutrients, and there's only about 3,000 acres of this soil uh, in the country. And we have grown hemp there for successfully for the last three years. And so we, first of all, partner with our farmers uh, by providing them genetics and providing them an opportunity to extract that material and increase value. Uh, and now with this facility that we've built, we're really, the next evolution is to empower developers. A lot of people want to get into the industry again, whether hemp as, a, as, as an entry point and then further on into cannabis, um, but don't have the capital, the, the infrastructure to do, develop the products and the ideas that they have. And so we really see ourselves as an enabler of that. And so again, as a way of us kind of giving back to the communities, we really want it to be an infrastructure uh, company to empower others to be able to do the, the things that they're good at. Very cool. So, so overall, to summarize that, I mean, you guys are really providing um, basically any of the services anybody needs to go ahead and, and process their product, create and design, you know, and innovate on new brands, new products and bring them to market. Um, can you tell me a bit about the process as far as 
the overall business model, the services, um, and then what it would look like for a business to engage with you and kind of start that process in creating their product and their brand? Sure. So first of all, um, uh, the, there's really three areas on, on the product end that companies can engage us with. If you're somebody that currently develops your own products, you're a hands-on uh, entrepreneur and you've got your own products and ideas, but need a facility and a partner that gets you compliant and gets you this, uh, the ability to scale production when you need it, we're, we're the right fit for that. And we call that our, our co-development uh, business model where young companies, small companies, entrepreneurs that need more of a helping hand to develop their sample size products. And then later on, a first batch of products to start getting sales and then future into scaling that, we're a, a fit for that. We're also a fit for the larger companies that have existing products, want to infuse CBD into their products, but need a partner for that as a co-packer, uh, providing them a turnkey. And we'll take their products, infuse it at our, our facility or integrate a, a new production line for them, but we offer them a turnkey. And then the last one is we develop our own product lines that we offer into the marketplace in wholesale and white label levels. And so then uh, entrepreneurs that either have brands or entrepreneurs that have distribution can piggyback on the, on, on the upside between the wholesale price and the retail price. So those are really the three areas on the product side that we can interact with uh, people, entrepreneurs. Excellent. Okay. So a few questions there. Um, if, if I'm a business and I've got a product and I want to go ahead and bring it to, to New York, ultimately I can't do so unless I'm working with a you know, specific business that's licensed out there and following the extract laws. Right. So, so therefore if I have a high quality brand in California and I want to bring it out there, I need to go to you and work on a co-packing deal. Is that, is that correct? Uh, somewhat correct. I mean, New York set a set of standards that are higher than any other standards issued by currently in the marketplace. And so if you're producing a good quality product in, 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 in California, for example, you do have the ability to demonstrate to, to, to the regulators that you're in compliance to the New York standards. You've got your COA at the flower level, you've got your COA at the extract level, you've demonstrated that you've got the potency in the end product. They wanna see those level of compliance. And so if you're producing out of state and you're meeting those requirements, as long as you have a partner from a distribution perspective into New York, you're, you're able to, once you get approval to, to to get there. We're obviously another, another way to get into the New York market by saying we can, all, we can manufacture here and, and distribute here. So maybe it's not worth shipping it all the way from, from out of state, but manufacturing here it as well and distributing it here. So there's various ways to tap okay. into the New York market. And where the, the standards are just there to really create consumer confidence that can be manufactured out of state but they could be manufactured instead, obviously, as well. Sure, sure. So, so I got a question specifically for Andrew here. Andrew, um, you know, spent spent a good chunk of your uh, your your previous career as a ski guide, you know, an instructor up in up in British Columbia, which sounds amazing. Can you tell me a bit a bit uh, about what it's been like to enter the hemp industry? You know, what you've learned, how that process and experience has been for you. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, my my first career out of college was Wall Street. I was a financial advisor and a wealth management guy. And, you know, I had a really deep itch and I scratched it by going to British Columbia and becoming a mountain guide, which on its head really makes no sense. But it, it made a lot of sense at the time. Um, you know, coming back into the fray, if you will, and coming back to the U.S. and coming back into this marketplace, it's been very interesting. I feel that this whole industry as a whole, um, and again, I'm, I'm fairly still new to this business. Um, it feels like it's corporate light. It's, it's a parallel universe. And I find it really interesting because it feels like I'm, I'm living almost a, a corporate dream in a sense because most of the people that we come in touch with were people already in corporate. And they've been spit out for whatever reason. They've left it like I have. And they're also in my parallel universe. 
So it's, it's, it's actually been very, very um, comforting and it's been very accommodating. I don't know if that really answers your question, but I, I, I feel that it's, uh, it's I feel like I'm, I'm pioneering a whole new, you know, way of doing business because people are very open to it. So nice. Yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm, very, glad very that, I'm glad that the industry has been nice to you. I'm glad that we've been nice to you. So that's, that's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> now, our, our 15 minutes just flew by. So, so we got to wrap this up and we will, we will get connected again soon. Um, Cause I, I mentioned, we're going to be starting our, our kind of long format, yeah. you know, more in depth conversations. So we'll have to get you guys on there. Cause I've got a host of questions. I could take it every different direction. Uh, but okay, right. so if you're interested in connecting with Andrew and Aaron and Urban Extracts, please add them to your network on CanTrade. You can also place orders and ask questions directly from the Urban Extracts wholesale store posted in the webinar chat, also in the CanTrade feed and in the podcast and YouTube show notes. Thank you very much for joining us today, Andrew and Aaron. Thank you, Thank you Mark. Awesome. We'll talk again soon, guys. Yeah.